definitely be taking out your stock uh, five liter Mustang from back in the day, that's for sure. to drive like there is something about BMWs I know they have their issues but I just I love driving them so I'm sure you guys can tell I enjoy uh, driving this car in fact BMWs I feel like I drive them like way harder than I do my Fox bodies I don't know if it's just because I trust a BMW more, I trust myself with them more, or feel like I'm not gonna blow them up as easily. I don't know what it is. the alarm flashers continuously go off because the old Viper paging alarm remote died and I actually opened it up I tried to bring it back to life when I say I opened it up I mean like I opened it up I had my electronic cleaner in there everything else all these contact points were all corroded and tried to clean everything up and get the uh the little old Viper song to play, and it just won't. So, needless to say, and those aren't cheap to try and find one of those vintage alarms, so it might be time for an upgrade. For now, I'm just going to unplug the brain, to be honest. So if we just... Uh... There you go. That's all of that. Look at all this wiring. Rat's nest of stuff. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. So you can see here all the mouse pee and mouse doo-doo and everything else. So it probably wasn't a bad idea to rip the glove box out and get access. You can see where the mice have eaten and did their droppings and everything else, which is pretty damn disgusting. Um, it does smell better in there already. I got some of this. Resolve urine destroyer. So, for now, I'm going to try and vacuum out as much of the mouse shit droppings and mouse pee. We'll get some coconut air fresheners in there. Try and liven things up a little bit. I think it's going to take a lot, ultimately. Don't know if it'll ever all go away. Hope it does. It's going to be nice the next couple days. Park the car outside, windows down. Keep spraying, praying, hoping that the car smells better. But uh, got fresh oil in from uh, FCP Euro in this box, so we can actually do an oil change on the car. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Waiting on a set of new tires, so we can get these winter tires off the car. And then in reality, should be able to drive it around. I got some lighting issues, you know, there's low beams out, everything else. So I'll try and, uh, try and see what I can repair you know, this is old H -E -H -E -D, HID technology. So probably rip out the old ballast, see if I can do LED bulbs or something in there. And that's pretty much it, guys. Gonna vacuum, try and get this thing smelling better.
So a little update. I have been removing anything sound deadening material related, you know, off the backs. These are underneath dash covers. So I'll just put kill mat on that instead. That way we don't even need to worry. Just get all the mouse piss and shit out that we can as possible. I'm gonna be removing the rest of that around the glove box assembly. Just trying to vacuum stuff up, get stuff fairly clean. There's a little bit of like moldy weirdness on the carpet down there. It's gonna get some good products. Uh, hopefully that have a little bit of uh, bleach and disinfectant that won't harm the carpet. I just pulled everything out of the trunk here, which we have, I believe that's a 338 diff, which will be much nicer on the highway versus the 391. The 391 is a shit ton of fun, but it's there as options. And got some rear M3 um, arms and brake setup. So there's a new subframe or carrier for the rear diff and subframe. So a bunch of possible upgrades for the car in the future, but look at this disaster in here. The mice just brought a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna rip, you know, as much as this, like I can smell it, obviously. Um, what else we have in here? Uh, actually it is still an old amplifier in here. It smells like absolute shit. So, anyways, guys, keep vacuuming, keep cleaning. Hopefully, we get somewhere. All right, guys. Oh, I think I found the mouse house. Absolutely disgusting. I'm going to be going to get my mask, a spare belt, windshield wipers. Found the old emergency 2x4s, you know, in case you needed to make it over a speed bump, because believe it or not, this car was actually lower at one point. And. Oh, absolutely disgusting. So let me get my mask, get all this stuff thrown out. I don't know if that's just some water from rain we got the other day. Maybe a seal leaking. Maybe it's a bunch of mouse piss. Who knows? Oh, oh. Guys, my shop smells like barn and mouse piss and shit. It really does. So... I'm going to spray the interior and maybe uh, sprinkle baking soda and stuff. Cause the thing is, unless I pull the seats and the carpet, I'm trying to avoid pulling the carpet because I don't think generally mouse, mouse, mice live like up and they find themselves their little nooks and crannies and little open areas to build nests like we found in the spare tire wall here and up underneath the dash and everything else. So I think, I've got most of the droppings, everything else vacuumed up, all the nits and bits and crap and everything else. I just got a bag full of um, insulation and nest and everything else in here. So it's going to get tied up, tied up and thrown out. Stuff like the spare tire well, which was a pretty neat custom install thing. Now that wasn't perfect to begin with. That actually came out of another E36 that I had at one point that I transferred over to this car. But they'll make a good template, maybe recreate that. The uh, round old piece for the spare tire cover, which this car never had a spare tire. It was just like a resource for the amplifier, you know, extra two by fours in case you need some help going over some speed bumps and whatnot. But everything here, like I said, vacuumed up, cleaned up, as good as possible can spray everything down and let it sit out in the sun today and then probably do a vacuum like i said some uh, baking soda and just let it absorb as many disgusting scents as it can and uh, vacuum 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 and i'm determined guys if i manage to get that smoke smell out of that other lightning that i had we can get the most piss smell out of this car all right guys 24 hours of baking soda sitting and you can see the yellow that it's all pulled up and that is baking soda truly doing its job absorbing odors absorbing nastiness and you can see like i i threw it all in here it was on the seats carpet rear parcel which i'm gonna have to wipe down better it's hard to get the vacuum back there but um, I actually filled pretty much this whole area up with baking soda and let it absorb for two days. And it is smelling 
a lot better in here. So it's still not perfect, but that's because there's still a lot in the baking soda and everything else. So we'll get that all vacuumed up and just kind of carry on with the process. All right, more cleaning. And now for my final clean, which I am going everywhere with this guys, is two parts water, one part vinegar. That's right, just normal household vinegar. And that should neutralize. In fact, probably could have done this step first, but going to spray everything, then wipe it all down with a microfiber, blot all the carpet out, and hopefully that is going to get the last of the mouse pee smell out, which it's almost out. Oh, now we got the rain coming, not a bad thing. A little bit of water will just help the process here. But this has been like a week long activity trying to get the mouse pee smell out of this car and just nothing that you guys want to deal with. I'm sure all of us have been there at some point, but um, it's nasty. Thankfully, we're on the up and up here. So I'm going to blot all of the interior, like I said, wipe it down. Uh, this will be... It's the second batch that I've mixed up. So guys, don't be frugal with any of this. Like look at the size of the box of baking soda that I got down in the spare tire wall here. And that's the second box that I've gone through. So just to give you guys an idea of how much I've gone through, plus the six coconut air fresheners that are in there. So like I said, fingers crossed, this will be the last of it. All right, so we have vinegared. We have baking soda, we have wiped, we have done everything. And in fact, I've even popped out the instrument cluster because I put my head down in there when I was vacuuming stuff up, I could still smell something lingering. And guys, if you can still smell it, it means you've left something behind. And sure enough, behind the cluster, you can see pee pee, poo poo, so ripped that little bit of sound deadening out. I forgot that that lived up there. That's sort of similar to what was on the passenger side up kind of above the glove box area up in here. So now that all that dead weight is out, um, I'll probably put some strips of kill mat wherever they need to go. But everything has been vacuumed, vinegared, um, deodorized, oxy cleaned carpet, all that other good stuff, wiped down with Dawn and soaked up with water and everything else. Um, and I've actually gone ahead and treated all of the vinyl on the inside, which is actually looking pretty damn nice. There's a couple marks on things that, you know, that's just wear and tear from over the years, but uh, seats and dash and everything else are looking really nice. So we're almost in a position to hopefully be able to get the rest of the interior back in. Like I said, I'll do some kill mat. I've got to wire in my new Viper alarm because unfortunately I couldn't find a replacement key fob for that old school one. So we'll wire that in. Glove box can go back in. Rest of the OBC and cubby hole, all that shit, gauge cluster, the underside panels, the trunk area. This is all pretty clean in here. And it's amazing too, this car used to be red, believe it or not. And there's some leftover, and if you look at an area like here where there's some scratch paint, you can see underneath the white is red. So when they did a color change on this car, they weren't messing around. Like, that's pretty serious and extensive to have gotten white paint all up in there. Like, guys, even up in here, like, it's actually pretty unreal. And you can see all the white overspray paint and some of those wires and stuff like that. But, you know, whoever originally did this color change, and that would have been way back in the day because my buddy had this car. Geez, it was, he had it mid 2000s, early to mid 2000s. So the car's a 92. It was probably resprayed in the 90s. So. It would have cost a lot back then, but now I wouldn't even be able to wrap my head around it. It was probably like 10 grand back then to do this paint job, which would now probably translate to 20 or 25. So unreal. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Got to uh, run to the commercial shop, go deal with some stuff over there because we're nearing the holidays. But Mother Nature's doing its thing. Things are airing out. And finally, 
like I'm almost able to stick my head in there and not wanting to uh, gag. All right, guys, Friday afternoon here, and I've burned up some hours today just on stupid stuff. You know, you get caught up and you get absorbed in things, and then you're like frustrated with yourself that you've allowed yourself to get so immersed into something so stupid. Well, that is what has happened to me here today. And it is messing with the old Viper alarm slash keyless entry slash remote start that used to be in this car. Now, the one thing that wasn't working was the actual Viper paging alarm remote. And it just kicked the bucket. It was all corroded inside. It saw moisture. So after stalking eBay, I managed to find another one and it plays the song it does the dance it does all those things that it's supposed to do however going into programming mode following the instructions you know led and hitting valet button and doing chirps and door opening doors turning ignitions on following the sequence all to find out that this used new to me but used remote would receive information so it would tell me that a door is open it would tell me if i go into valet mode and the alarm is disarmed or any of those things but i couldn't arm the damn car so i was like you know what i bought a newer style viper alarm system just in case i couldn't find the remote i did find the remote hoping that you know i'd just be able to program the remote and everything would work the way that it used to well guys wires all over the place and probably for the best. So this remote start slash alarm was pre-wired in the car long before I got it. And I think it was a Best Buy that installed it, if I remember correctly. Like, look at this. They used these connectors, but they put the wires in one end, right? And they did this for the door unlock and lock buttons and like just everything. So the wiring is subpar to begin with. But, you know, I'm going through unraveling everything and, you know, checking out the harnesses and everything else just to come to realization that the harness, after all these years, believe it or not, guys, because I was going to wire the new one in and here's the new harness. Well, let me tell you. The harness hasn't changed. In fact, the only thing that's changed is one wire, which is not, it's missing here, and it's the yellow one, and that yellow one is uh, switched ignition. So I am gonna have to use this harness, but I didn't have to to test things. I literally plugged this old harness in. I plugged the old harness in for the door lock and unlock actuator, plugged in the transponder, and you know, hit the key and boom, everything works. So I'm going to be, I'm going to remove this connector. I'm going to rewire everything up, new wires, new proper connectors and get the glove box reinstalled and get the rest of the interior reinstalled. So that will pretty much complete off what we need to do in the interior. So like I said, it's just frustrating, right? You're wanting things to work. And actually it was so bad guys, I actually accidentally locked myself out of the car. My phone was in there, had to do the old coat hanger trick and through the glass in between the gasket and everything else, but I managed to get it done. And I know some of you guys can relate. So I just wanted to share that. Headlights are out of the car. They are sitting in the shop and we're gonna be going over that in terms of reviving the old HID kit that was in the car and the CCFL style angel eyes that um, I had a bad low beam ballast. I had one bad CCFL angel eye ballast and no high beams at all. So we're gonna be introducing high beams, but we'll get all into that in a minute. I'm gonna finish up this wiring real quick and then we'll go and start knocking that out. All right, so now we are getting lit and just going through and getting new ballasts and everything else installed and tested. So where's an old one here? Here's one of the old ballasts. So these are uh, old school 35 watt slim ballasts. Back in the day, I don't think 
they made the 55 watt and slim so that's just a 35 watt bulb there and that's running on this ballast so got a pack of these from amazon guys they were cheap like 20 bucks something like that and then i got a pair of ccfl ballasts and funny enough like this is kind of old technology but it's still relevant right and then i realized this is the same type of setup that uh, powers up my speed hut gauges and there's lots of like anything reverse glow or i guess angel eye related or anything else just kind of uses these guys right here and here's the old one so pretty much the same deal so just going to go ahead and you know get some nice connectors which i've already started here get these all connected up and then i will get the other ballast plugged in here and make sure that that light's working and then finally i've got led h1 bulbs for the high beams and i got some 9004 9000 or 9005 9006 Yeah, 9005, 9006 um, connectors so that I can actually make them plug and play into the factory connectors from the car. So the name of the game is just wiring stuff up. Nothing too crazy, and hopefully everything will work. I did notice this angel eye is not lighting up as bright as that guy, and that one started off dim, and then it came back to life. So I'm hoping this one does the same. Because if it doesn't, it's nothing worse than mismatched angel eyes. If this one's dim, that one's bright, and then uh, this one's dim, and that one's bright, and it's, you know, symmetrical, I'd be okay with it. But if you got three super bright ones and one dim one, yeah, not, uh, not going to be liking that so much. So we got a couple nice little upgrades done here. So we've got angel eyes, low beams, high beams. They're all working. Also managed to add this ultra rare AC Schnitzer strut tower brace. I scored off eBay. So that was a pretty easy install. And that's pretty much it. I just need, need another air filter. Guys, can you believe that this was on the car? Like that's just absolutely disgusting. It is a K&N, but I'm gonna get a new filter and uh, get that on there and everything else should be good to go from a drivability standpoint so this car still needs quite a bit in terms of uh, tlc exterior you know correction on trim and some paint areas and everything else but it's in a position to drive the mousepiece smell is mitigated and reduced drastically enough to the point where you can sit in the car and not feel like you're going to vomit so Really happy with the way that everything is coming out on this car. And if you see behind me here, another BMW showed up, 2006 E60 M5, and just showed up this morning. So I haven't even had an opportunity to get too intimate with it. There will be a video coming out on it. So that's pretty much it. Good little start to E36 content and E60 content. And then maybe we'll do some more E39 content. As always, thank you for your support. Hopefully you're enjoying the uh, diversification in the content. Till next time, we'll see you back here on the Infamous Project.